It's mini build time. Let's do some Kung Fu. So this Kung Fu flash cart, this was very kindly donated to me by Lee from the YouTube channel More Fun Making It. He sent this to me back when I was working on the ZX81, when at that time he also sent me a composite mod kit for that little computer. So as you can see, it is more or less fully assembled. The only things that we need to fit are the main package that sits there, a USB port for there, micro SD slot that goes on there, and three switches. And so I thought I'd also use this opportunity to try to go into a bit more detail on just how I do this sort of surface mount soldering. Because I know a lot of people see surface mount soldering and immediately get scared of it. They immediately see the pitch of pins, sort of like that, and decide that there is no way they would be able to solder a component onto something like that. And to be perfectly honest with you, if I was trying to solder this chip on there one leg at a time, well, I don't think I'd be able to do it either. But it's not that there's any magic involved in this. Rather, the two most important things when it comes to fine pitch surface mount soldering such as this. They are the solder itself. And in this case, I'm using this Loctite leaded solder. It's that plus this stuff, the Flux. This is Chipquick SMD291. The 30cc tube of this is relatively expensive. It's about 30 pounds or so on Amazon but it is absolutely worth every penny. Without this stuff, there is no way I could do this type of soldering. In terms of orientation for the package, this dot up here, that represents pin one. And equally on the package itself, there will be a dot. Now, on this thing, there are two dots. There's a large one there a smaller one in this corner. So which one is pin one? Well, as I have it aligned here, pin one is in that top right hand corner. If you're in any doubt as to which dot represents where pin one is, the other thing to look for on the chip is the chamfered edge. All the other edges are square. This edge is cut off, it's chamfered. That represents where pin one is. Obviously you need to take your time and make sure that the chip is properly aligned on the pods before you try to start soldering. And I suppose I'm lucky enough that I can still just about see it with my eyes without any magnification. But once you do have it aligned, don't try to solder the whole thing in one go because it will move on you and you'll not get it right. Rather, just drop a bit of flux into one corner. You can see the tip on my iron is quite big when compared to the size of the package. But personally, I just prefer this larger tip. And it is a chisel tip, as you can maybe tell by the profile of it. So I find the best thing to do is to load a little bit of solder onto the tip of the iron itself. And then we'll just offer this up to the pods not necessarily touching the legs of the chip, will let the solder flow onto the pod and up the leg. The flux will do that for us. There we are, I think. That corner is stuck down. Just give the chip a wiggle here. And yeah. So again, we're not going to jump in and just try and solder the whole thing. Rather, what we're going to do next is do the same again on the opposite side. I always like to clean the iron in between doing this. But again, just a little bit of solder on it. Okay, that time you might have noticed that I did actually nudge the chip slightly, but it has settled into the correct location. 
In fact, let me try and pull out some magnification to show you that a bit better. So I have my three and a half times magnifying lens here out of my glasses. And hopefully you can make out there that everything seems to be aligned properly. And take a look at that side. Again, it all looks okay in terms of positioning. There's the other side where we tack down one of the legs and then that final side. And yes, it is important to check the whole way around the chip, but again, that looks okay. Never assume that it's sitting in the correct location. It's easier to try and move it now when there's only the two pins tacked down rather than in a minute when we're gonna have all of it tacked down. So how do we get the rest of those legs soldered in place? Well, we're gonna rely heavily on the magic flux again. This chip quick stuff really is worth its weight in gold. So we're not gonna tackle one of the sides on which we've tacked down pins rather we're going to do one of the other ones we'll do this side we're going to put plenty of flux on it i know that looks like an awful lot but better looking at it than looking for it again i just cleaned the iron before starting this and we are just going to load up the iron itself with solder again and then this time we're going to drag And because the chip is anchored in place, we can now drag over the top of the legs themselves. It shouldn't move. Once we've done that then, what I like to do is go in with the iron and you can, you'll feel the tip of the iron touching the outside of the legs. So we're just going in along the edge of the pods. And when that iron touches the outside of the legs, just drag it slowly across. And that just helps to make sure everything flows properly. Now, we've got a blob, but don't panic. That is really easy to solve. All we need is a bit more flux. And we're just gonna dab in and out from that. We'll clean the iron each time. and the blob eventually disappears. Sometimes then when I'm finished, what I like to do is just sort of dab in and out on the pins. Doing that I find just helps to ensure that there are no bridges anywhere. So that's that side done. We'll do the opposite side next. Just exactly the same procedure again. And then we'll go ahead and do the other two sides, the sides that we started on, where we tack down those legs first of all. That's it done. Now obviously it's a mess of flux. We'll come back and tidy that up at the end. Putting these other components on is just going to be exactly the same thing again. The likes of the micro SD slot, well, it's handy because it actually has little tabs on the bottom of it, the kit in the place. But again, we'll just be sure that the data pins on it, the pins at the back here, that those are aligned correctly. And I think that's them there. But this thing is anchored at the sides as well. So I think we'll start with those. We'll start at those points and that'll just ensure that the whole thing is held in place for us. That's that side secured, but just to be sure that it is in the correct place, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure onto this with my finger and melt that solder again. Yeah, that's fine there. So I'll do the one on the opposite side Then we'll do these other two points at the back. And when soldering a larger point like this, as you've just seen me do, I like to just offer up the iron and then feed the solder into it. Hold it for a second just to make sure it flows and that's it done. 
for the data pins then. And granted, yes, there'll be power in here as well. But to do these pins of the SD card slot, similar sort of method to what we did on the main IC here. Flux on the pins. We'll load up the iron with some solder. And we're just going to drag. Take a quick look through some magnification. And yeah, that looks fine. The USB port is a similar affair. This thing will snap into position. It has legs that go through the board this time though. That's it in position there. That was very tight to get on. The pins that go through the board just tight either side to the data and the power connections here which are surface mount themselves but the two that go through the board there they were really tight but that seems to be it in place now and like we did with the SD card slot we're going to anchor this in position first before we tackle those bits at the back and we're doing something like this I find it's best to do just one point then lift up the board apply pressure through it with your finger and remelt that solder just to be sure that the component is sitting flat. Obviously, you don't want to hold the heat on this too long because it's all metal and you'll very quickly burn yourself. But that is definitely sitting flat there. And so we can then solder these other three points. Then we just need to do those surface mount pins onto the board. And just the same thing again. Let's inspect it again. And yeah, it looks okay. So the last bit of soldering we have to do, I suppose, is the easy bit. Just three switches. Or three buttons. Yes, those are really tall buttons. But there is a good reason for that. Same story as when we did that USB slot there. We'll just tack down one pin for now. Then with the board in my hand, we melt that solder and just push the switch from the other side just to ensure that it is sitting flat. They're all okay, so let's just get this finished. done. Now it just needs a clean and for that we'll use some IPA and cotton buds. In fact just before we do dip this in there there is quite a bit of flux on this so I'm going to go over it just with the cotton bud first. Just dry and take off what we can. Sticky mess. We'll then go for a dip in the IPA and just go over everything again. Right, that's pretty good. I'm happy enough at that. So let's get it programmed. We need to program the main chip here and we do that from this point using one of these. We're going to follow along with the instructions on the GitHub. I have it all hooked up here as described. And I've downloaded the most up-to-date Kung Fu Flash UPD file and renamed it to a bin file. So let's see if this works. So that goes in there. Let's open the ST-Link utility. Now the connection on the top of this thing is a bit flaky. In fact, I think it's these really cheap DuPont wires here. So I need to sort of hold that with a bit of tension on those. But we can connect to it. Let's select our bin file. And program. Memory programmed in two seconds. That seemed very quick, but that seems to be it done. Yeah, just run that again with verification this time. And it's fine. So that's it. You can see as soon as I let go of that there, 
the software actually disconnects. But this programmer here, I just bought it for this very purpose. I think this was only about three or four pounds on eBay. So I suppose you get what you pay for. But that's a program. I did fit that pin header there just to do the programming. I suppose we might be able just to leave that. Let's see if this fits in the case, i.e. this thing. And this comes back to why are those buttons that are so tall? Well, that's so they protrude through the top of this. So let's test it. I have the C64C set up here and ready to go. I put a copy of Donkey Kong on this SD card. Just fat formatted SD card, so that goes in there. This goes in the back of the 64. And let's see what it does. Now, would you look at that? The menu just comes up straight away. There is just the one file on there, the program file. Although the Kung Fu Flash also supports D64 disk images and CRT files, which I think are cartridge files. But let's just see if this works. Hopefully this loads a lot quicker than it would using the floppy drive or the likes of the SDIEC adapter that I normally use. And yeah, that comes up so quickly. This is fantastic. So thank you again very much Lee from More Fun Making It for sending that my way. I think with this cartridge I'm going to get so much more use out of my Commodore 64s. And you gotta love that music from this version of Donkey Kong. I don't mean to rip off Adrian but a little bit of 8-bit dance party. Although if I'm honest I would have to say I prefer the sound from the 6581 Sid chip rather than the 8580 that is in this machine. But that's going to be it for this mini build video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.